What's up, everyone? Welcome to another edition of the Sarlacc Digest, a podcast bringing you line talk and digesting Star Wars topics over a thousand years. This is episode 80, being recorded on July 1st, 2020. And the gang's all here, plus a very special guest. And before I introduce him, we've got Darth Dad 77s in the house. Hey, hey, and I didn't do it. You didn't interrupt me. <laughs> didn't. Oh, my heart was beating so fast. I was like, please, that was a very that was the smoothest intro I've ever done. Man, I waited out the entire time. <laughs> we have Scott Solo is joining with us. Hey, what's up, nerds? Fanboy Mike is here, is here again. I, I made it. We're getting used I to your it. voice. We're getting used to your face. <laughs> Bootleg Joe. Hey, yo. <laughs> and this is a household name for us, and I'm sure it is for a lot of people, a lot of fans, a lot of people that do the extracurricular stuff beyond the movies. Mr. Mark Thompson, thank you very much for joining us today. Hey, thank you, guys. This is awesome. Cool, cool. Um, we have Mark Thompson on the Starlight Diet. I know, right? That's <laughs> so cool. Jeez. We mentioned I that, you know, what, what we do a lot name. is, um, yeah, you, what we do a lot of uh, is like, you know, every time a novel comes out or a comic book or something extra in this new canon world of, of Star Wars mm-hmm. and everything beyond the movies and everything, you know, we, we do <laughs> break it down on our shows big time. And Chris is one of our lore guys who we kind of like turn to and he's like, look, I just, I just finished this novel. And, We've all done the audio because, or the audible, you know, the audio books because they add so much flavor to it. It's not just reading a book. It's not just listening to a book. It is, it is like the characters that you do, and then the background noise, the soundtracks, the special effects. It's all there. It's almost like you know listening to it a movie. It comes to life. It does. Yeah. It, it comes to life, and we appreciate that so much. If in <laughs> fact, like, we always have different groups outside of the podcast and other friends that we talk to. And we always have extra things that we talk about because, you know, we go beyond the movies a lot. So yeah, this is a special treat for us. And, um, absolutely. Yeah. So this, again, this is a long time coming. We've been talking about you and the books and everybody else who does the audio books between, between, uh, all the star Wars properties and everything. And, uh, you know, um, <laughs> so this is like, uh, you know, we're kids in a candy store here. So <laughs> dream come true. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me. That means a lot to me. So thank you guys. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so I'm going to give the floor over to Chris. Uh, again, he's our lore guy. And I know that uh, we've all gotten together. We brainstormed some questions, uh, you know, to uh, go over. And um, Chris, go ahead, man. It's the floor is right yours. On. Uh, we're going to roll through, but it's going to be like, I'm trying to make it conversational. We'll ask a question, sure. go through it. And let's just see if we can have some fun. Um, yeah. Really, and I don't want to butter up. Mark already did most of that, but Mark, I know you don't want to hear this from a 43-year-old, big bearded dude. <laughs> so, man, you give me so many bedtime stories. <laughs> like, I love it. Right. I love it. On my ride to work, I'm two and a half hours in the car every day when we're not on lockdown. Yeah. Right. Um, when I go to bed, when I'm doing the lawn, when I'm chilling in the spa, I've, I've got a Star Wars book going, and 90% of the time, it's one of yours. Yes. So uh, that's that's wow. why. Um, so that's the end of that. I'm not going to fanboy anymore. <laughs> Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go around the horn, I'm sure. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, dig it, Mark. Now, you're you're like our age. Okay, we're all right in the, the mid to late 70s. Okay? Sweet spot, I call all, it. All yeah. beards and stuff. But you got you got the dream job of everybody. Okay. How how did you how did you even get started just to start voice acting? Let's forget Lucasfilm and everything else. How did you get into voice acting? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, I I knew pretty early on that I wanted to to act. And I had, you know, great support in high school. I had awesome teachers and coaches, and they really encouraged me to to give it a go. So I did, and uh, I went to NYU to study acting. And I think it was my, like, sophomore year, there was a, a, a posting on a cork board. This was before the internet, everyone. But uh, they, they just put the audition <laughs> on, like, a little bulletin board. And... Uh, I, it was like for a, a show on MTV and like you call in and you leave a voice message on someone's answering machine oh, yeah. as your audition. Okay. And it was like, really? Okay. So, uh, and it was like a cartoon. They were trying to cast a cartoon about vampires. So I thought of like Igor from Dr. Frankenstein for some reason, which isn't related to vampires. So I'm not sure why I did that, but I, I was like, uh, hello, I'd like to be on your cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that was enough to get me like a call back. And then I got in the door at MTV, and that show didn't go into production. 
but another one did. It was called Daria, which was a yep. spinoff of this show. Uh, Beavis right. and yep. and, know it uh, very well. And that was like, yeah. <laughs> and I got to play like a, a, a dumb football player and a couple of teachers. And, and that was my first ever paid gig in voiceover. And then it just kind of snowballed from there. Like wow. that led to things like Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! And, uh, and then eventually uh, I got to do this stuff. And um, yeah. So, so it was like for, for pretty much right out of the gate, like sophomore year of college, I, I ended up getting work in voiceover and then just predominantly that's where I've gotten most of the work I've done. Right. So have you have you known from I mean, obviously, it's, a, it's an extremely probably rare talent to be able to mimic that kind of voice and, and make that, that many voices. Did you know early on you could do that? Did you do that as a kid running around doing other yeah. cartoons and stuff? Yeah, like I, I was kind of a couch potato. So I, I just watched TV all day, every day. And we would mimic things and I have a very clear memory of someone calling the house and asking for my mom and she wasn't there. So I was like, <laughs> hello. And I was like pretending to be her. And, 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 and the person actually bought it and I was like, Oh wow. So uh, I've just kind of uh, done that. And it, it was annoying for a long time. And, you know, uh, it, it used to bother my parents, but, but uh, my dad had to kind of, eat his foot and realize that, okay, you can make money at this. So go ahead. That's Keep right. making the annoying voices. <laughs> <laughs> it's something you can turn into a career. That's what like, makes our yeah. generation great, right? Like we're making careers off of being lazy. I mean, yeah. watching TV and like, you know, like not being lazy, but you know what I mean? Like it's just a generation X is the best generation. I'm, I don't care, man. This is, <laughs> you know, I mean, for God's sake. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. My living is scraping, boy. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, Marco. But I mean, we all we all relate to that. I'm he mad. says Daria, and we're like, yes, you know, sitting on like I said, you know, we've all have movie scripts in our head just because we have 44 years of experience of consuming all right. this stuff, right? Being nerds. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I love that your first gig was the MTV, and it, and it skyrocketed. I yeah. was on uh, the one. Uh, what's what's it called? The with the girls. With uh, Jenny McCarthy? Uh, singled oh, out? Not singled, singled out. out. Well, were you? I didn't, my career didn't skyrocket. <laughs> I was just one of the dudes. I wasn't the dude. That's cool, <laughs> though. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Jenny McCarthy touched my leg, if anybody wants to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just playing the same. Get a little tattoo. Right. There you <laughs> go. All right. So we got Daria. We know the start. What else do you do? I, I happen to know, but I, we got some nerds in, in this group, especially yeah. uh, <laughs> probably above you in the screen or around you in the screen. Um what other voices do you do? Um, so I do, I, I like I said, I do a bunch of the creatures on Pokemon. So I do like Glide Good and like <laughs> Tippy wow. and uh, a bunch like Mammal Swine and Turtonator. And I do Professor Oak and uh, Don George and a, a bunch of the characters on Pokemon over the years. Uh, I did Duke Devlin on Yu Gi Oh! Um, and then I've kind of had guest starring roles on all the spin-offs of Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, most recently, I did this character Astral on, uh, oh, was it Zexel? I think that one was. And then there's a new, there's a new one now that uh, I'm, I'm doing some voices on. Um, and I've done kids shows. I, I, I'm Peking Duckling on this show that's on Netflix. I'm currently uh, Megatron on Transformer Cyberverse. Awesome. Oh, now you're starting um, to speak my language here. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so like I've gotten to do a, a, a lot in animation. That's awesome. Um, and then, you know, audiobooks and stuff like that. So, a, a bunch of things all over the place. So, now, I, I remember seeing that you did uh, Cobra Commander for Sigma 6, right? Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, no, yeah. that's that's right in my will. <laughs> yeah, Scott's got Cobra tattoo. Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. Cobra tattoo. Oh, that's, oh wow. <laughs> Joy. We're. Thanks for the show, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, now that's a uh, that's pretty cool. So you deal with a lot of nerds all the time, then I'm sure. So that's uh, a uh, they are that's, my people. I them and they are me. That's right. Right on. And that, and that's kind of where we I was are going. There. I noticed we that you. that you're pretty well one of us too, right? I see you at the conventions and doing things, but you don't go there just to sign and talk you're you're in cosplay whether it's star wars or the other one yeah and uh the, I, I like the other one awesome. the the other one yeah. star I like right. <laughs> <laughs> right. <clears throat> um so how come uh, i i haven't maybe i missed it 
they have animation things. Has that ever come up where you've been on, to been asked to or tried to be in a Star Wars animation? Well, I mean, I've I've tried to be. Yeah, <laughs> it didn't go so well. Like I, uh, I, um, I, I, I'm on the East Coast, and uh, uh, most of the their talent pool, I think, is is in California. Um, so I kind of like. I don't know how long we have. If you want the, the long version of this story, but uh, or <laughs> like, yours, I, I, let's go. I, I was at, I was at celebration, and uh, we had din- done these books that was uh, it was called Star Wars Shakespeare, and Ian Desher adapted yep. the screenplays from all the Star Wars films and made them into Shakespeare, like Shakespearean plays and wrote them in iambic pentameter and all this stuff. Yep. So we got to do a live performance of Star Wars Shakespeare, and it was really mm-hmm. fun, and people really dug it. And as I'm coming off the stage, they, they take us backstage. And I think the panel after us was either Clone Wars or Rebels or something. But basically, like, Dave Filoni's, like, right there. Mm-hmm. And he kind of, like, makes eye contact with me. And I I was like, oh, wow. And I, <laughs> I kind of, like, just went up to him. And I was like, hey, man, I'm, I'm a huge fan of, you know, Clone Wars and Rebels. I, I, I love everything you did. And he's like, were you just on that thing? And I was like. Yeah, yeah, and he's like, "Oh, great job!" And I was like, "Oh, wow, thank you so much. That means so much." And then I just kind of walked away, uh-huh. and uh, I was all elated. I was like, "Thank you, <laughs> yeah, I touched his hat." Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> so then I get back to New York and I tell the audiobook director about this, and he's like, "Well, did you, did you, did you ask him for an audition? Did you give him your card?" And I was like, "Well, no." And he's I, like, "Yeah, what is wrong? With you? Yeah, like, the next time you." do always say you know like you need to you know ask for you know like you need to network and say i'd love to get an audition and i was like i don't know that feels weird so then fast forward two or three years later there's the next celebration and i had made like these business cards in the hopes that i might get to meet dave filoni oh, wow. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> uh, like this time i was like okay, if i get this chance again i'm not gonna let this pass by yeah so uh, i you know because i was a, an exhibitor I got to be on the floor early and sure enough, Dave is on the floor and, and I'm like all nervous and I'm like, okay, I just gotta, I gotta take my shot. I gotta, I gotta give it, you know, give it a go. And like, so he's standing there and he's like surrounded by three or four other guys. And I, I get the vibe as I'm walking up that he's about to leave the floor and I'm like, do I, don't I, do I, don't I, uh? and I kind of got nervous and I was like, Hey Dave, how are you? It's really nice to meet you. And I just kind of was like fumbling, stumbling my words. And I was like, you know, I, I do a bunch of the books and I'd love an audition. And he's like, Yeah, okay, great. You know, and I, I think it's been over oh. and, and I just felt so embarrassed. And I was like, This is that was so you know awkward and not sure. the way I wanted to make an impression. And he probably you know you know thinks I'm like desperate or whatever. So now it's like hanging over my head and you know. So sure. I've, I've tried through my age at different points, and uh, you know, it, 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 I think I think when I heard they were doing Thrawn, I I told my agent, look, I've done a bunch, I've done Thrawn in the books a lot. Maybe this could be a way in. And I think by the time they announced it, they had already recorded with him and with Lars, and, and uh, so I think they wrote back, well, we'll keep him in mind. But it's just never happened, and and right. now I feel haunted by it. <laughs> I feel well, like I've ruined it forever. <laughs> Well, so I don't know. I mean, if, yeah, there's still hope. I mean, the we got our fingers crossed that a live action Thrawn is coming, and I've always wanted a CGI Thrawn, yeah. so that means there's voiceover work. Okay, yeah, so yeah, yeah. We're, we'll keep our fingers crossed on that rumor. Yeah. All right. <laughs> if well, it that's ever my question, I was going to ask because you you basically create created the yeah. old Thrawn's voice, right? In the in the in Legends. Yeah. I get right. it. Well, I did the 25th anniversary, so I, th- I think there's other recordings of him before me, but but yeah. Well, that's the ones we listened to. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there wasn't one. So was that Lars that just, that was just him there and you had to mimic Lars or act as Lars? Yes. Yeah. So like I did the, I did the 25th anniversary of Heir to the Empire and, and we did that trilogy of books and I, I did that one way. And then after that, I think is when Disney bought everything and decided they wanted to kind of, you know, do a fresh start with the expanded universe. Um, so I wasn't <laughs> sure if they would want me to still be on or not. So part of me was thinking that I, I wouldn't be doing Thrawn again. So then when they asked me to do it again, I uh, it had already been established that he was on, you know, Rebels. And so I started listening to what he was doing and uh, tried to, to get as close to that as I could. So. <laughs> 
I, I had that discussion with somebody where like, I'm like, again, comparing voice actors to actors or anybody else I'm, I'm used to, right? And I'm like, well, when he gets yeah. down to it, I've heard Mark Thompson as all of these characters more than I've heard James Earl Jones, more than I've heard Mark Hamill, more than I've heard Harrison Ford or anybody else. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've heard, I've heard yeah. Mark do all <laughs> these voices. So any of them fit for me and yeah. that, as, as well. Yeah. Um, how about the, the process there? I mean, so how, I, I had always kind of imagined like you in a room doing it, getting a, a script or a book and having to read it. But is there more to it? I mean, is there, you said a director, like, is there a lot of stuff that goes on? What kind of process is that? Oh yeah. I mean, uh, there's a lot of people all working together. Like there, there's the executive producers, uh, which they'll read the script first and they'll say, okay, which actor do we want to narrate this particular book? Like, you know, which, which, which actor or actress do we feel like fits this, the tone of this book, the, the main characters of this book, what, what have you. Uh, so they'll, they'll kind of do that. And then, you know, Kevin Thompson, who's directed most of them, if not, I want to say all of them, but probably, probably not all of them, but he's done, He's been doing it forever, so he's done most of them. I think he gives his ideas of who he wants to the exec producer, and then they they have to get those approved by Lucasfilm. And uh, so then eventually it'll get to me if I'm picked. And then my process is is I'll read the the book as fast as I can. And anytime someone speaks, anytime there's a line of dialogue, I'll write that character's name down. And then any clues that the author has given me about this character. So like, you know, male, female, alien, uh, have they appeared in any of the movies or TV shows or cartoons or video games? Uh, what what alien species are they? Uh, is there any personality traits that the author talks about? Like there were the, the, a low gravel right. or a uh, throaty whisper, you know, like the, the authors will a lot of times describe them. And I use all that stuff and then I go back and I like cast it. So like I'll think of like, you know, this were a movie what actor could I see playing this role? You know, and if there's, you know, so sometimes I'll actually take actual, you know, actors or celebrities and say, I want them to be in this, or, or I'll think, well, what type of actor would I want? Or what, what would, you know, what would the voice be if I were to do this? So then I'll, I'll record samples of those voices on my phone. And then when we get into the booth, um, I'll, I'll record. And then I'll start when it comes to that character's turn to talk, I'll listen to a quick sample on the phone, get the voice in my head and then go forward. And at first, it's always a little herky jerky because it's like uh, I'm having to refer back to my phone a lot. So there's a lot of starting and stopping. Mm -hmm. Um, But then usually about day two or three, um, you start to get into a rhythm and you start to know the characters well enough that you can just start ping ponging back and forth. And I, I think one of you said that you saw the Instagram thing we did for Rise of Skywalker. So like usually... I practiced that several times because I knew they were going to do that on camera. <laughs> so, but in the booth, it's it's usually a, a lot of starting and stopping, and because it, it, you don't get to rehearse it that much normally. Like normally, you're, you're jumping right in and you're on a tight time schedule, and and then they, you know, once I'm done, that's usually four or five days of recording, and then Paul Goodrich at Merlin Sound will will layer everything with music and sound effects, and yep. and they just they just do an amazing yeah, job. Absolutely, like, yeah. you know. It, yeah, the audiobooks, the audiobooks for Star Wars are f- head and shoulders above the rest. I mean, right. just yeah. with the sound quality and the music and all that, it's captivating. You know, you feel like you're in it. Whereas I was just listening to, um, it was an old Indiana Jones novel that was read, and it was just oh, read. And I'm like, oh man, um, why yeah. is Mark Thompson not doing this? <laughs> Where's the I'd voice? Love to do an Indiana Jones. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Like even amongst narrators, like th- there is like two schools of thought. Like some people feel like you should just read it and let the listener, you know, imagine what the voice is and the ambience is. Sure. Um, but I approach it from a different school of thought, which is why well, I-, I almost treat it like a one-person show yeah, or like a, you know yeah. I want to, you know, so that. You know, but some people actually find that distracting. Like some people actually don't like that because then they feel like it distracts from the actual words on the page or you know so. So I guess it's just different strokes for different folks and yeah. pe- people like different things, but you know. Yeah, uh, it completely works for me because when I use my problem, my, my reading and, and we, we would do it on the show and to know the lore, I would read the book and I would listen to you, mm-hmm. you know, and that, that would be mm-hmm. how I really get it. And I would get the things I was missing in the book and all this stuff. Now I'm just here because it gets to, the, you know, between the drive and doing things around the house, I get to do stuff while, while reading basically, right? Yep. Yep. But it's put yep. such between you and the editing and the music and, and such that I'm watching a movie. My imagination needs to go. Whether I'm driving or not, and yeah. I should be, whatever. But I'm, <laughs> right. I'm, I'm in that movie for 
eight, 10, 12 hours, whatever that book is, or if it's a series, you know, it's like, it's so awesome. So yeah. I don't know, it's a, it's a, it's an art form and, and you, um, exemplify what it should be to me, not just, I agree. Oh, in. yeah, I agree. And so, I love it, you, uh, so yeah, that makes direction. sense. I was going to ask about the authors and if they had like, not so much favorites, but if the, if the, the voice fits, because you're obviously with Timothy Zahn more than once, right? There was the yeah. set we yeah. just, <laughs> the new set coming out, the Ascendancy set. So Ascendancy, that's yeah. really exciting. Yeah. Um, so you have characters in there. I mean, even, so you've got those notes then about like Admiral Arlani and, and Eli Banto and how to build those voices. Like he would have like a backcountry accent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's yeah. Awesome stuff. Do they ever give you carte blanche to create your own, or is that something like maybe they don't want you because they're going to reuse it down the line, and if that might be set in stone, if you are on the spot, kind of like doing that or like creating like, like for like Eli for example, yeah, for like, example, if there's a character in the book or or what you're reading is it something you don't have any direction of it, like an alien or something, do you get any kind of like um freedom to create your own aesthetics to that character yeah i mean like uh most of the time the, the kevin uh Ke kevin's the ultimate decider on that stuff okay um and he's got a really good sense of you know will this fit for this character how will this voice fit with that character in the next yeah. few chapters that they're talking about so he's really good at um he, he describes it as the different instruments in an orchestra okay. and how you make sure all the instruments work well together. So, um, but most of the time, we, I guess we've gotten to know each other's tastes enough over the years that the, he, he does take most of my choices most of the time. Uh, and he allows it. I think there was one time where I tried to make some Senator from some world, like sound like Carol Channing <laughs> And he was like, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> 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 that was a really good part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's yeah awesome. I mean, the reason I ask is because, you know, like we have, as fans, you know, we consume everything, right? So if there was, say, an alien specific name in one book and then she turned, he or she turned out to be in a cartoon or a, a movie and it's a complete wow. different sound, we'd be like, hey, se wait a second. <laughs> yeah, and, we, yeah. and we would refer automatically back to you and be like, no, it's supposed to sound like this. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm pretty sure that, I, I mean, I don't know if there's an official rule on this, but I, I think the, the books we tend to, uh, you know, um, look to the cartoons more for guidance, but I don't, I don't think the, the cartoons necessarily look to us. I, I think there's just, hmm. there, there's too many, um, there's too many because even book to book, if you get a different narrator, yeah. you know, like I think when we did Dooku, um, I did uh, a character that Jonathan Davis did. And we, we were able to look at, well, what did Jonathan do in um, what's the Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan book? Master that just came out? Masters. Master yeah, Master. Master. yeah. Uh, my favorite. He, he did uh, a character that I did in Count Dooku. So he, he had just done that. So he was able to say, "Hey, this is what I did for that," and that. Gotcha. that so we were able to keep it consistent that way. But uh, um, Dooku's you know, apprentice. Like I, we, uh, what's that? Was it Dooku's apprentice? Uh, uh, it was uh, Rail Abaros, I think. Yeah, yes. he was in That's Rail Abaros. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, which was an interesting character for the Jedi. But um, uh, so yeah, some sometimes we're able to do that, and I I know other times there was one book where. I was doing a character that January Lavoie established, um, so so sometimes we're allowed we're, we're able to do that. But gotcha. I don't think the cartoons are, are are listening to all the choices we make in the books because I think it would handcuff them a bit. And they they want to be able to yeah you know yeah. Have, like I said we're the only ones that would notice that handcuffing so. anyway yeah. Right? <laughs> and, uh, um, with that said, you you read more than we do. Okay, I, I consider yeah. myself like I, I read and I keep up and stuff. Yeah. So. Does it ever get to the point where you're you're reading something and you're like, oh, I need to tell Timothy he's on. This doesn't fit. Continuity. <laughs> <laughs> Does that ever happen? I mean, not really. I think there's like um, the 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 Leland Chi. I think uh, and Pablo Hidalgo are and, and the whole story group really, but uh, they they do a pretty good job of of. Mm -hmm making sure those types of things are, are happening in the editing process, you know? Um, 
Although I will say, like, you know, sometimes it's interesting doing the Thrawn books because in the Thrawn books, Thrawn is the protagonist. Um, mm -hmm. So you're, you're kind of looking at him differently than the way you would if you only saw him on Rebels. You know what I mean? Like you're like there there's a. a He's he's more of a sympathetic character. Like on Rebels, he's just a cool, right. calculating mm -hmm. adversary. Mm -hmm. yeah, like, right. oh, that, like that's intense. But like in the books, when you right. when you're in his mind and you're and you're seeing some of the noble choices he's making, and that he's, you know, he yes he works with the Empire, but it's it's almost like a utilitarian choice of like uh, I'm I'm doing this for the good of my people. Like it gives you a different perspective on Thrawn that someone who only watched him in Rebels might not see that side of him. So it's not a contradiction per se, but it's definitely very different than if you if you only experience him in that one way. Yeah, listening right. to the novels, I feel like I forget he's a villain. You know, I forget yeah. I, he's one with the Empire. It's distracting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. I, I side with Scott on that. I, I I find that when I was when I was listening to that that character, I was not necessarily going from, but yeah, going from like, I wanted things to happen for him, um, yeah, you know, yeah. throughout the book. And it's just, I love the point of view that it gave, um, and not necessarily what rebels. I mean, I understand why rebels do it, uh, um, uh, did what they did, but it really did get perspective. And I loved it. Yep. Yeah. Sorry, well, it's one of the things that oh, sorry. Um, so, so tell us all these, right. Oh, Thrawn is my favorite character, by the way, I wanted to mention that. So, and part of it is through, the, the the voicing but i just the character like the way you describe him is uh i, I love watching because i think in my like a, a manager's style or a real life style how i would want to work for somebody i would want to work for yeah them. you know <laughs> yeah. my boss was like that i would love life sure yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah um so now i'm gonna come back to the to, to voices in the star wars work and everything what was one that you just nailed right away you're like you know what i killed that like i know <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know that I ever feel that way. Like, I'm usually like, can we do another take? Yeah. Can we do it one more time? And like, I'm like, no, just go on. <laughs> uh, usually I'm like obsessing over it not being good enough or wanting to do it again. And, and because you're doing these like 10, 12, sometimes 15 hour long productions, you, oh. you, you don't get that luxury. Like you, right. you have to keep moving because it, it'll just never get done. Um, you're an artist, so yeah, <laughs> you have that, you have oh, yeah, that stigmata no. that we I, have. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> is that an eight-hour day that you would put in in voice acting? As far as you know, this is the the amount of time that we're allotted to record. Is it eight hours, ten hours, twelve hours? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm really bad at math. So it's like we usually start at like ten in the morning and we'll go till five or six at night. Um, and, and I usually have to do like, obviously they'll let you out for, you know, bathroom and sure. food and, and they stuff let like you that. Out. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah. And then we try to get it done in four or five days. So, so, you know, usually, wow. um, yeah, you're up against the clock a little bit because if you have to rent the studio for longer, that's more money and, and, mm -hmm. you know, you know. So do you have the same thing we all do then? Since you do this for a living, do you hate hearing your own voice? Because I'll never listen to a show. I'll never. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, it's it's a uh, like I don't I don't I don't know if I would say I hate it, but like I'm definitely critical of it. And like sure, um, but but at least with the Star Wars, like if I if I have to listen to books I've done that aren't Star Wars and it is just my voice. Then sometimes I get a little like, oh, I don't like that, or I wish I had done something different there. But what's fun when I do listen back to some of the Star Wars ones is when you hear the music and the sound effects, and like sometimes they'll put a filter on the droid voice or something. Mm -hmm. Then then it feels like I'm listening to somebody else because I'm like, oh, what is this? Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, it's, so it's almost like I'm able to enjoy those a little bit more because I get to enjoy all the the choices and and layers that the that the other stuff is is doing because because the, then it doesn't sound like me if that makes sense like right. when there's yeah. uh, music oh, it. it sounds more like a different thing so uh, that's awesome okay how about that then how, how about one that makes you cringe just regular non-modulated nothing just which one i don't want to do this voice i can't get it, <laughs> it. <laughs> power through it um i i feel like i didn't do justice to finn in force awakens or, or any of the novelizations i, I just felt like what? i couldn't quite 
it. Because I, I felt like I felt confident about Poe. I felt yeah. okay about Ray, but I always, anytime I have to do a woman's voice, I, I feel like I'm insulting women uh. everywhere. So I don't know. <laughs> oh, no, man, you, you nail Ray all the time. Yeah. And I just could I was trying to make it different than Poe, and I, I just felt like I never quite got uh, locked into him. So I, I, that, that one bothers me sometimes. That's fair. That's fair. I think you nailed Poe, by the way. In that, in, uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> it was yeah. Resistance Reborn, too, right? You did that. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, nailed it. Fun. Yeah. So good stuff. <laughs> um, now I'm going to ask you, let's see, uh, how about this? People ask you all the time for stuff, all, and we're going to ask your voices later. And I know everybody's probably yeah. waiting. But what is, is that? You get asked that a lot. Does that get uh, tiresome after a while? Like we we had swore it off. Like I had said, we're not going to do this to Mark. <laughs> but he's not a performing monkey. Yeah, right. Yeah. But I'm like, he doesn't put a living. He's, you know. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't mind it so much. It, it's 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 fun. I just. Uh, but then again, like the 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 perfectionist in me, like when right. I do it, like at conventions or even on something like this, I'm like, oh, it's not going to sound as good as if, if it would if I were on like a really nice mic. And, you know, <laughs> I know. so I get critical of it and I'm like, oh, but, you know, yeah, um, uh, we don't want to make that feel self-conscious about it. We think you're excellent. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be okay. um, that's awesome. Um, tell you what, to, sorry, guys, I got lost there for a minute. I was so happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you do you do that at home? Do you like pull out voices to practice at home? I know you're a family man. You guys go on trips and stuff and, and do a lot of things. We see it on your Instagram, right? Which, by the way, I, I think you're a super positive influence in the Star Wars yes, community. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. So, oh, thank you. <laughs> um, do you do that to your kids? Like, I would all the time. My son's name is Luke. I wouldn't I stop. <laughs> this kid would deal, right? Would you do that? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, uh, I do it all the time. Like, when, when they were younger... I would read like kids books to him and I would, I would do, you know, kind of like voices or whatever. And, uh, you know, I would have thought they'd be like really into it, but eventually they were like, daddy, just stop. Daddy, normal voice, normal voice. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, um, and then and a big thing is like, and I do, I practice voices in the shower. So sometimes my wife will be like, what are you doing? <laughs> or like, if I, if I, I'm, I live in New York city and there's all kinds of really interesting voices just on the street. And, you know, so sometimes if I walk past somebody and I hear wow. a really interesting voice, I'll like start to mimic that voice as I'm walking away because I'm like, I don't want to remember that. That's a really cool voice. Um, so I, I, I steal from everywhere. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> That's awesome. I never even considered that just walking down the street and catching somebody and snaking uh -huh. it. Some interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Your voice is mine yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, have you ever did an order and drive through with a voice? Uh, I don't think maybe maybe when I was younger, I don't think I've done it uh, recently. <laughs> I could just imagine the emperor ordering a Big Mac or something. Yeah, right. <laughs> or, or I would like Thrawn. to supersize it. No cheese, please. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. <laughs> I love it. Like, there was a rule, Mark, where we said we're not doing voices. That's Mark's job. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we got Scott up here doing voices now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. My bad. <laughs> I'm kidding. All right. Now, uh, one one serious thing. Now, I, I mentioned a second ago how the uh, you're a positive influence, right? The the, the fandom has kind of gone since Last Jedi. It's uh it's changed. Right, we were uh, used to being on Instagram, and we were actually we were Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We 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 really liked Instagram because everybody was really chill. Like mm -hmm. it was like there was a big party before Last Jedi, and then <laughs> day after split in half. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you being in, in in the spotlight more and going to conventions and things, and I'm sure on your Instagram, how do you deal with? I, I know you've seen that negativity and had to deal with it. How do yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess the honest answer is I just try to avoid it. Like I. I do feel like I've heard it said before that the reason people do get so passionate is is because they care that much. Sure. So even if they have an opinion that I don't agree with, I try to look at it from the perspective of, well, you know, the opposite of love is is not hate. It's ambivalence. It's indifference. You know, so like the fact that they some people are so kind of saying hateful things I try to look at it as like, well, it just means they care so much. I think, unfortunately, it goes, they give in to the dark side, if sure. you will. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Uh, 
you know, and, and I think that's unfortunate that they're not able to see how hurtful those comments are. So, but, but I don't, I try not to, I, I guess, add fuel to the fire because, yeah. um, I, I don't think that's really helpful either. So, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, a, you know, I guess sometimes people accuse me of, uh, being a shill because I do work for, you know, the books or whatever. And, and, you know, but I, I just genuinely love, love all of it. Like yeah. I, you know, I, I can acknowledge that there's problems with, with all the films and there's, mm -hmm. there's, there's things you could nitpick at for all three trilogies, you know, but, uh, but overall, I, I just love all three of them. I love the prequels. Yeah. I love the yeah. sequels, the originals. Like I'm just, and I, I think there's probably a lot of people that are in that camp as well, you know? Yeah. And, and so, but, uh, but I do feel like, you know, if, uh, it is this, I'm sure you guys have seen the meme about, you know, so-and-so ruined Star Wars. No, so-and-so ruined Star Wars. And it's like, no, it's like the people that, you know, are complaining about everything. And it's like, I don't, I don't want to go to the extreme of saying you shouldn't have an opinion or you shouldn't complain. Cause if right. you don't like something, you have a right to express your opinion. But I, I do think that like after a while, it's like, it, it, it makes the people that are trying to create new Star Wars absolutely uh, feel paralyzed yep. by this, by this, you know, fear of like, you know, well, this group's not going to be happy if we do this and that yeah. group's not going to be happy yeah. with that. And then, and I think, and that, you know, most of the creators that I've met do deliberately have to say, I'm, I'm going to put that out of my mind because, mm -hmm. uh, because of that, you know, that, that paralysis of analysis and, you know, yeah, all that stuff. So, but, uh, but you know, there's, d despite all of the, <laughs> uh, the outrage and stuff like that, like, even when you look at the box office for, you know, these movies that, you know, supposedly everyone hates. It's like they're, they're still hitting <laughs> right. records and stuff. So, exactly. like, there's still enough people out there that like it enough that I, I think we're we're safe and we're fine. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. See, and I knew you were so. a kindred spirit because we've had that exact discussion on here. Yep. Almost the exact same way. But yours obviously has more weight because you know better. But, I mean, <laughs> uh, <sure. laughs> that was that's exactly how we see it. If there's something we don't like, we either ignore it or we headcanon it until somebody proves us different well, yeah. or we go back through the history and try to explain it because again we know all that lore because either you've read it to us or we've read it ourselves exactly. it's like you know, we have all this I, I can see why Luke would do what he did exactly no, you know I had that argument again today for like the fourth straight year yeah. about Luke We're very, you know? yeah. we do constructive um, criticism you know we'll take something that is a little bit wonky or awkward and we're like we're like no this is the way i did it and like like just put it in its place and then move on to the next thing i always sit there and yeah. go like what we get it's this is gospel now to in the star wars world yeah. like we put it in yeah. our shelf and like this is what happened like it or not this is what happened right. so yeah, yeah, you don't yeah. like it but it's there this so is like we'll do. <laughs> I, I do make a joke but i i mean i'm pretty committed to this but star wars is real to us man this is this, this stuff that happened <laughs> so, <laughs> just a long time ago exactly uh, yeah, if i, I studied do, u.s like, history this way we'd be good yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> i do feel like too it's like these like there is something about the nostalgia of it that mm -hmm. you know when you, when you watch these movies at a certain age um you're not i'm not i'm not as critical of these movies when I watch them as a kid as I might be now as an adult. You oh, know absolutely. what I mean? So I, I yeah. think there's a certain amount of that. And then also it's like, especially on some of these last ones, I've realized that these movies are intended to be watched over and over and over again. Yes. Because I think when I first saw Rise of Skywalker, I left the theater honestly a little disappointed because I felt like some of the pacing was off and it just like rushed mm -hmm. through a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But then the more I watched it, you know, the more I like fell in love with it and now I genuinely love it because it's like it like it, it's like if you go back and do that to Star Wars or Empire or Jedi you know like you can find pacing issues you oh, can yeah. find things that aren't we just overlook it. you can <laughs> yeah yes, but, it, but it's yeah. just when you watch it so many times you fill in those gaps through you know just your own common sense or like you said yep. headcanon or yep. like or even like comics and books you've read over the years it's like Oh yeah, well this is what happens there, and, and so it's not a big deal to you anymore. Exactly. And it, and you know, it, it, so I think they're kind of meant to be watched over and over and over again. Absolutely. You know, and if, if there, there's a lot of movies that maybe are paced better for the first time I see it, but when you go back and watch it again, it feels so slow, and the movie just drags, and, yeah. and you don't want to watch it over and over again. And you know, so I, I think it's really, uh, uh, it, it's a unique. Uh, 
genre within a genre. You know, mm-hmm. like I think Star Wars is like a, a genre unto itself in a way. Absolutely. And it, and, and there's, there's a certain kind of you know pacing and language and style that it's it's uh, really hard to get. And and uh, and obviously different people think you know different things about what what makes something Star Wars and what what makes it not Star Wars. But exactly. uh, yeah, I, I love it all, and yep. I, I think it's awesome. Yep. Us too. Every bit of it, whether it's the books, the comics, the movies, the shows, whatever, we'll take it and, and we love it all. Yeah. So <laughs> you know, we that's, consume. Thanks for getting that up. Yeah. Um, before we, I'm, I, we're gonna do a little uh, quick line talk and stuff in a minute, but before that, do you have any projects coming up that we could talk about? I know some things have been announced this week. Yes, uh, I am a part of the Doctor Afra audio drama. Ooh, which nice. Is really cool. It's just like uh, the Dooku audio drama in that it's a it's a, a full cast. So oh, wow. instead of like just one narrator doing all the voices, this one you have several actors doing several characters, and it it just gives it another layer of depth. And you know, and it's awesome. So I I play uh, Darth Vader in that. I play Han Solo, Chewbacca, three PO, uh, Bosk, and uh, and a couple other people that get killed by Vader and stuff. Oh, <laughs> Nice. Oh, very cool. But it's nice. really great. And it, it's, I don't, I won't spoil it, but like it's, it's an adaptation of the, of the Dr. Afra comics, but it's told in such an inventive new way that, uh, you definitely will want to listen to it because it's not just, uh, copy and paste from the comics. Like mm. there, there's, there's new stuff in there. The way it's being told, there's a very clever device that Sarah wrote into the, the thing. And it's, so it's just, it, it, I think it's going to be really special, and and that was all recorded during the COVID nineteen craziness. So we were yeah. all recording from home, and wow. and and I just talked to Kevin today, and he said it's sounding amazing. They're mixing it right now, and awesome. uh, nice. So, and, so that's gonna be great. And those are and the then, things we uh, look for too. We look for those little yeah. snippets <laughs> and those extras and books and everything that the like the movie didn't give us we're like oh my god kylo ren said the why did he say the right there you know so. yeah. <laughs> well and what i've learned to love about the books is that that they they get to explain the the inner monologue of the characters yeah. or, or the motivation things that in, in in the movie that might just be literally a, a two-minute scene right but in the book it could be like an hour chapter that that you get all this more insight into what was going on in that two-minute scene and so it's like I really learned to love that about the books because, uh, you know, uh, you know, so, so anyway, so that's, that's going to be really cool. And then in the fall is the start of the new Thrawn uh, trilogy. And, uh, it's, Waiting. Uh, yeah. Ascendancy. So that's good. That's going to be really cool. And you, you get deep, deep into Chiss culture in that one. Nice. And, uh, he's on is like, uh, really going crazy on this one so awesome. it's, it's really good good really cool. Now I don't want to get in any trouble here for asking this part. But I mean, this is just theoretically as a fan, we, you saw Rebels, where it ended. I know you watch all this stuff, right? So yeah, where, yeah. Ending, where Thrawn was, is there any way that Thrawn, his story could carry into where the old legend stuff was? With some tweaks, obviously, right? Because he hasn't met our legacy heroes. He's only right. met legacy villains. And in, in, in yeah, old yeah. old legends, he, it was the reverse. He only met the heroes, not the villains. Right. I mean... Again, I don't know anything, so this is just speculation. <laughs> this is line talk. This is line talk. This is what we exactly. do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I I think it's possible, right? Because, like, because don't, don't we, I mean, spoiler alert, but don't we see uh, at the end of Rebels, that's before, like, when we see Ahsoka and Sabine, that's uh-huh. before Episode 7, right? Like, that's that's after 6 and before yes. 7? Yes. Right yes. Right. So, yes. 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 Mm-hmm. I think technically, if they if they were to find him, yeah. <laughs> which would be an awesome story that I really want to know, then tech, then you would assume that they would find Thrawn, and then now you'd have to do you know the the de aging thing, and 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 yeah. I don't you know it'd be interesting. I, I I would love to see it, and I'm sure a bunch of people would love to see it. Yeah, I, I'd be. I'm point. wondering. I'm trying to remember. I guess that would some some of that story might eat into the reveal in nine of, of Palpatine still being around, right? Because in, in the original, wasn't that well, part of that story? He had uh, Sabaoth, right? Yeah. Well, it was there, but I don't think it was so much the Emperor, but the cloning piece was there. So I guess that could kind of explain. Oh, that could be, yeah, you could do, yeah. yeah. I mean, that'd be fun if they did. I would love to see Luke and, and them against Thrawn. That'd be awesome. Yeah. yeah, even if it's animated and you just do all the voices, I'm cool. Even better. Yeah. I, in my opinion, that's the way to go. 
if they That's do anything. The, we talk about that all yeah. the time. You know how yeah, Texas yeah, Comics does yeah, an animated yeah, yeah, as a Star yeah, yeah. Wars used to do. Yeah. Oh, that'd be awesome. I didn't even think of doing it as an animated series. That'd be yeah. great. Because then it'd be an animated Luke and Han. And like, yeah. That's what I'm yeah, saying. It, because, That's the only way really yeah. to get the old legacy guys back. Yeah. Yeah. Really, is, yeah, you're right. You're right. Unless you, because like I've seen some people speculate that Sebastian Stan could do a young Mark Hamill, which right. would be fun, but it's yeah. probably too expensive to, to do all that. <laughs> expensive, yeah. and, and you, you wonder if people would accept this since it's in the middle of the two. But everybody yeah. expected accepted McGregor after we all thought that would never work. Very so, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that worked thriving. Yeah. yeah. All right. Oh, so now what we want to do is have a couple questions for you, and I'm gonna put you on the spot. Okay. okay. I've got a couple <laughs> questions. If you can answer in a character, I'll throw out too. Okay, right. at least answer the first part as the character. If it gets deep, you don't have to stay in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we don't want you to strain your voice. Don't walk for three minutes as Aralani or something. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Just off the top, as Vader, your favorite Star Wars movie? My favorite Star Wars movie is The Empire Strikes Back. That is the uh, correct answer. That yes. is correct. That awesome. is yeah, correct. Yeah. We'll pass <laughs> to the next round. <laughs> maybe Mike, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Empire is it? Are you, awesome. You're an original trilogy guy, I assume. That's the next. I, oh, wait, I, hold on. Don't answer it. That's my next question. I'll get you in a oh, character. Sorry. How about as Anakin? Um, prequels, originals, or sequels? I'd have to say the originals movies are my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> the other one. Um, they're forced. They get everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> You're amazing. You're amazing. Okay. Sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Woo. All right. That's good. <laughs> Let me look at it. As you, Lauren. Okay. I'm an Imperial guy. I love my officers. If you can pull off a of Lauren and your favorite non Star Wars movie. All right. So, you, Lauren, is he's, he's also in Clone Wars, right? Correct. Yeah, he's he's correct. the guy who breaks down every what's happening at the beginning of the episode. Well, he's the he's oh, the yeah. admiral in yeah. Clone Wars. Um, um, I can change it to Aralani. <laughs> my favorite. Arlani. Um, Arlani. my favorite non-Star Wars movie is The Matrix: The Red Pill or the Blue Pill. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fantastic. That's great. I love it. Yeah. Come on. I'm good now. I can I can leave. I can be happy. I can let you go, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I know before. Okay. I, this don't, is don't a, an go. argument between Scott and I. Okay. How about as three PO, <laughs> Phantom Menace or Attack of the Clones? Oh dear! What a terrible choice to have to make. I do love the Yoda battle with Tam Dooku in Episode Two. But that dreadful dialogue between Master Anakin and Padme, I can take it. So, episode one. Oh, that was a correct answer, <laughs> sir. <laughs> oh, that, was okay. that was awesome. That was so I awesome. I lose. Damn. Chris, you, know, you have to take that as gospel now. I said yes. Ah. And I said whatever Mark says is gospel, Scott. And you can't argue with him when he says Attack of the Clones. And you didn't. So <laughs> I'm going to go and cry now. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! I How about say, uh, I was saying that was nuts. <laughs> I'm gonna switch it. I'm gonna put a female in here. Let's see this one. How about favorite uh, novels you've done as a Saj Ventress? Oh, mm. my favorite novel that I've done as a Saj Ventress has to be Dark Disciple. Oh, man. Oh, Fantastic. Another great uh, correct Dark answer. Dark Disciple is so good. <laughs> I, I can't. I love this. Yeah, right. All right. I'm going to try. I'm, try. I'm cutting it down now. <laughs> well, I, I don't can't stop smiling. It. It's perfect. That's perfect. I'm dying. Okay. I know you're a Trekkie, too. So these next yeah. two. Okay, here we go. As Han. I, I'm done with you, too. I saw that. All right. As Han. Kirk versus Han, overall. <laughs> Look, Captain, you might got your big starship up there, but you're nothing compared to a good blaster in the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> Again, another correct answer. <laughs> yeah. uh, I can't imagine. All right. Last one. And we'll, and we'll yeah, end. I'm really cheery eyed right now. I know. I promise you, it's so good. This will be the only podcast I ever re listen to, Mark. Just like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Okay, last one. Ask Thrawn. Thrawn versus Khan. Ooh. Khan. You may have abandoned me on Sessi Alpha 6, but I promise you, I will have my veggies. One day or another. <laughs> Very I got goosebumps that, right now. I just <laughs> did, man. That right on. Awesome. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, wrap, I'm gonna take you off the hook. We're good now. Thank Mark. you, thank, thank you, you for that. You okay. make a bunch of nerds so really happy for that. Wow. <laughs> All right. Although, and, although he can say I love Starlight Digest and Thrawn. I mean, is that a possibility? <laughs> possibility? <laughs> we'll talk afterwards when we do the post. Because, <laughs> 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 okay, <laughs> okay, Mark. For me, one time, one time, uh, please. Uh oh. Chewy. <laughs> I, love I love it. All right. Yes. all right, you're off the hook, Mark. We're done. We're Thank done you, with Mark. That. that was that was awesome. That was kind uh, of I'm you. Done with all this, guys. Do you want to jump in real fast without you know harassing the poor man? I know, right? Um, I I had a question real quick from our chat. Yeah, go for it. And that would be uh, from our our buddy Gordon. He just wants to know uh, what would your your uh, let me see what would your dream voice project be? Mm. Oh, to work with Dave Filoni on a cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna tell you right now, Mark. We're pretty sure Dave listens to this show. <laughs> Oh, okay. so, yes, he yes, he does. Yes, he does. There have been plenty of times we've said something and darned if six months later, more, oh, there it is. Yeah. Well, See, uh, just, a yeah. Dave, there's a Dave that listens to our show. We just yeah, assume they, it's yeah. Philando. Yeah, they all, they all listen. We know. That. All right. all I'm right. sure we've got a George or two, but I doubt it's a Luke. <laughs> it's right. him. I can hear Mark, his uh, beard. I, I think we're going to start wrapping up here. Where can we find you at, Mark? Uh, so I have a, a website, markthompson.net. I'm Mark with a C. Uh, I'm Captain Ehud on uh, Twitter and on, on Instagram. And I'm, I'm Mark Thompson on Facebook, M-A-R-C-T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N. Cool. And I will put those links in our description here in the, the video and, of course, on our uh, SoundCloud and iTunes and everything so they can follow you and, and keep up with you. And uh, again, this was this was awesome. This is great insight. I, this was a great conversation. Um, I, I mentioned it before. You, you've you lived in our ears for the past <laughs> few years now. Uh, or actually, it goes off longer than that. But since we've been doing the podcast, you know, and we're really, really concentrating on the canon and the lore and everything that comes out, you know, we, we look to Chris as like, Chris, this came out. What did you get? And he's like, I haven't even... I haven't read it yet, or I haven't even just give me a chance. We're like, oh, okay, we're listening. Or, we're waiting. or knowing Chris, uh, he's already read it, and we're listening to it four times. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah, and we do take our cues off that. And, I mean, we all of us do. Like, I mean, on our travels to work, you know, if, if we just we just have yep. you in our ears mm -hmm. almost uh, twenty four seven. So, um, you know, oh, wow. <laughs> you're at home with us, man. That, that this was awesome. Um, oh, thanks. I had a lot of fun. Thanks for having me cool. on. Yeah, um, we'll let you go because again, you're East Coast and uh, we're we're on the West Coast. It's still daylight here, so. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> What's that? I'm sorry, Chris. Oh yeah, yeah, sure, no problem. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, right, yeah, we're we'll sign off uh, on the podcast here. So um, I think we're done, right, guys? We're we're ready to get out of here and. Uh, yep. Okay, so right. Chris, thank you very much for heading that that was awesome uh we could find you here and or hoth topic podcast if i ever drop another episode but until then just keep listening to episode four to learn about luke's arc that i keep pimping for the last year yes <laughs> <laughs> very good scott solo hey uh you can find me on nerd tunes occasionally and always here you can also track me down on Instagram with the art of Scott Solo. Uh, check out all the work I'm doing. I've got some big stuff in the works. I can't talk about it, yep. but uh, I can't wait to share it with all of you real soon. I know it, and I'll be sharing. But anyway, <laughs> I won't. I won't. I won't disclose nothing. Mike, thank you for joining us again. We'd love to see your face. Where can we find you? Right here on Solid Digest every other week, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> way to commit. Every maybe. other week. Yeah. All right, cool. Bootleg Joe. You can find me here at the Starlight Digest, and you can find me on Instagram, 
at bootleg Joe underscore seven six zero. Awesome. And of course, uh, Ernie, follow Ernie, who is a fallen fet who is not on with us today, who is our sixth member. Uh, but follow him over at Toy Migos, uh, their Facebook. They do a, almost a daily show over there where I'll get your toy fix and all the latest and greatest. Um, and again, you can find Starlight Digest on our YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, everywhere you get your podcast listening tools. We're, we're there. RLU Network. And again, Mark Thompson, thank you very much. And appreciate you with that. I think we're out. Keep it nerdy, everybody. <laughs>